Welcome to week eight. This is the hinge assembly problem. So let me show you on Blackboard. If you go to Blackboard week eight, you should have the inner hinge part, the outer hinge part, and the pin hinge part. You should also get the PDF. So these are the parts on a PDF file. Not all the dimensions are on here because I was running out of room, uh, but all the correct, all these dimensions are correct. The parts that you will download from Blackboard uh, are incorrect. They're partially incorrect, so you'll have to uh, troubleshoot the parts and make sure they are correct. It looks like this when they're done. Let me show you what the what the final project looks like when it's put together when it's assembled it looks like this you'll be able to go to move click on this part and rotate it like this when it collides it turns red if you set it correctly so it should turn about almost 180 degrees without collisions when you get finished okay now I'll show you how to put it together going back to the PDF file again so these dimensions are correct you can either open each part and uh, and verify that they are correct and if they're not correct fix them uh, or you can assemble it and then in the assembly you can correct them so let's go to bring NX back up and I'm going to create a new file now first thing you have to do Okay, so you have to uh, go to Blackboard, download these three files, inner hinge, outer hinge, pin hinge, put them in a folder, and then create a, an assembly file, which is just a model file with nothing in it. So we'll do that first, and put it in the same folder as the three parts. So I'm going to go to NX and say New. These parts are in, mil are in millimeters. So I'm going to go to millimeters, I'm going to go to the folder that I put the parts in, and I'm going to create a new file, I'm going to call it assembly. Normally when you make an assembly, you want to put assembly in the name, so you can tell the difference between a regular model part file and the assembly. So I'll call it hinge, this is the second one, I'll call it two, and say OK. So right now in my in my downloads folder is my inner hinge, my outer hinge, and my pin hinge, and my assembly file, which I created, is also there. So when you open an assembly, if somebody else has an assembly, and you open it, the NX will look in the same folder that the assembly file is in for those parts that are in the assembly. So make sure you put them all in one folder. Okay, so I'm going to go up to the assemblies pull down menu. We're going to be using the add component command, the move component command, and the assembly constraints command. The add component command will bring in a new model, reference a new model into an assembly. The move component command does two things. It'll either place the model that you're bringing in, that you're referencing in, uh, somewhere on the screen in the assembly. You can place it where you want with that or you can move it inside that assembly from one place to another, or you can use the move component to actually cause motion of two parts in relation to one another. The assembly constraints command is how you assemble the two parts in relation to one another. So let's go add component. The first component is usually the base component, or the biggest component, whether you're building from ground up or left to right or whatever. Uh, if you were doing a, assembling a bicycle, you'd probably pick the frame of the bike first, and then you'd put the wheels, the handlebars, and everything else onto it. So we're going to go into Add Component. Make sure that you click on the, uh, the little gear symbol here and make this the Add Component More. You want the full menu. <clears throat> go to the Open command, and we will open the outer, or sorry, the inner hinge. The inner hinge is named the inner hinge because, uh, and we'll go to select object, it's because this hinge, the inner hinge, is what is uh, 
connected to the, this is a Ford Escort door hinge, and the inner hinge is connected to the uh, frame of the car. The outer hinge, outer half of the hinge, is connected to the door. That's why it's called inner and outer. Even though that the, the inner hinge is actually <laughs> sits on the outside of the other half of it. So we're going to place this thing. Uh, there's two ways you can place uh, the part. One is by move and one is by constraint. If you click on constraint, that just means that when you place it on the screen, it will ask you what if you want to put a constraint on the part at that time. You can put the constraint on later. I'm just going to use the move for this for this uh, example. I'm going to now you can uh, change the uh, the plane that you place it on. So you should put it in the orientation that you want the part to be sitting. You can always use the yeah the move component command to rotate it later if you put it in the wrong orientation. I'm going to snap it right down to there to the origin and say OK. And now it's in there. By the way, if you spin this thing around, you want to put it back to the correct orientation. You can right click on your mouse, go to Orient View, and go to Isometric. That'll bring it back to the Isometric View. Um, you may also click and hold and put this thing in Shaded View where it doesn't show the edge lines. Normally when you're working with a part, you want the edge lines on. And now we're going to add the second part. So Add Component. This will be the outer hinge, which sits inside the, the other part. I think I'm just going to name them uh, brown part and yellow part. Uh, so here we go. We're going to select the location we want to place it. Oh, we got to select what we're going to put in there. So we want the outer hinge. Say OK. And there you see the outer hinge coming in. And we're going to place this. Now, if you want to place it by component, well, now we're just going to place it in here. Just going to click to drop it and say OK. And then we're going to put the first constraint on. So when you go to the assembly constraints, here they are. The icons you see here are the first one is called the touch align, like touch slash align. And this will bring two faces or edges or points of a plane or an edge of two planes uh, in relation to one another. Typically we we place two faces or two planes of two uh, parts together in relation. So aligning two faces, if my palms are two faces of two different parts, if we align the, the faces that means that my palms would be aligned on the same plane. They could maybe not touching, they could be off like this, they could be facing the same direction, but they're on the same plane. They could be facing one, uh, one, one another like kissing, uh, uh, but they're on the same plane. They can still rotate or slide in relation to one another, okay? but they're on the same plane. So that's what alignment is. Touching is when you touch two, maybe two edges of two planes, two faces. Uh, but normally we're, we're talking about planes touching, not edges. There is a way that you could put an edge between two planes uh, on a plane, too. Uh, but that's touch align. Uh, we're going to use touch align also to line up holes or to line up shafts inside of holes or to line up two shafts. And that would be the touch align. And then you go down here to the orientation. And we want inferred, infer center axis. So you might say this whole command to line up this hole and this hole is called touch align and first center axis. What does that mean? Well, let's zoom in on this. Touch align and first center axis means we're going to infer two, cent two center axes, axes by clicking on the surface of the cylinder. Not the center, the imaginary center or vector down the center, but the two surfaces. So when we're inferring, we're inferring a center line down the middle of those two holes by inferring a center axis by choosing the two surfaces and we're going to say apply now if you say okay that applies the constraint and then it cancels out of the assembly constraints option 
if you say apply, which we're going to do, it applies the constraint, but then it waits for another constraint. Now over here in the left hand side we have the assembly uh, navigator. And under that we see the assembly name here. Under that we have the inner and outer hinge. These are the parts that are in the, the history of the assembly now. And between the name, the assembly name and the parts is the constraints listed. If you click on the plus sign next to constraints, it will show you all the constraints in this assembly. You should open up the constraints and have it open so you can see what's going on here at all times. If any two constraints, you, if any constraint that you apply to an assembly is uh, conflicts with another constraint, that those constraints that are conflicting will turn from a green check mark to a red X. Immediately you want to delete that constraint. You do not want conflicting constraints. Always keep your constraints open because it's a lot easier to fix it when it first happens if you get that error than to try and troubleshoot it later. Okay, our second constraint for this part. And all parts will typically be one or two constraints if it has motion between the parts and three constraints if it is if it does not have motion. You never want to over constrain a part, put more constraints in than is necessary. You never want to under constrain a part uh, and make it free to move in one of the three axes or to rotate on one of the three planes if it's not supposed to. So our second will be the center constraint. And this has nothing to do with centering a hole on another hole. The center constraint, as it says here, it says centers one or two objects between a pair of objects, which is what we're going to do here. We're going to center the top two walls between this outside two walls. Or it centers a pair of objects along another object. So if you want to space out like gears on a shaft, so we're going to go center, sorry, get the right one here, center, two to two. Click on two to two. And that means we're going to pick two planes that we want inside or centered inside two other planes. So I'm going to pick the outside planes of the top part and the inside planes, one, two, or the bottom part. And it centers them, as you see. And then I'm going to say, okay. Okay, continuing on. I had to pause there a second because I was putting together the parts that I had just fixed earlier. And I have to, I want to put them together like you're going to, going to be putting them together. They're not quite right. So this is the two parts so far. Let's bring the third part in, the pin. So we're going to go to open and find the pin hinge and click on select object and bring it in the pin hinge with move okay i'll show you how to bring it in with constraints so click on constraint and then when you click to drop it 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 brings up the constraints inside the add component dialog box so it's waiting for the first constraint which will be touch align in first center axis again we're going to pick the uh, the cylindrical surface of the pin and we're going to align it with this side over here now I'm aligning it with this same hole that I aligned the top part with with the hole um, because these other holes really they're not they're broken they're not aligned right so always align things with the same part the same feature and I'm going to say apply and the next one I want to do is I want to take the the surface of the pin here like if I were to do uh, let's see so let's go to add uh, assembly constraints again if I were to do an, an align command um, not in for its interaxis just to find closest if I wanted to pick this surface and align it with this surface here that would put those two surfaces touching one another 
Uh, another way to do the same thing is to put a distance between them of zero. So we're going to do that. We're going to go distance that surface to this surface and that would automatically line these two surfaces up parallel also. And I'm going to put a distance in of say, let's say one. Say we want one millimeter away. If I rotate this you can see that they're not quite touching. And then if I decide later, oh wait, maybe I want to make them touching. Maybe I want the distance to be zero. If I had done the align, that'd be great. They'd be touching. If I had the align on there uh, and I wanted to move it away from it, though, I would, you know, separate the two parts. I'd have to delete the align constraint and then add the distance constraint. With the distance constraint, I can just go back into distance, go back here, double click on distance and say, let's make it zero. Enter. And all, all of a sudden it's zero. You may notice that the pen does not come all the way through. That's obviously something wrong with the pen. It is too short. If you look at the hole over here, you'd see that the pen does not line up with the hole. So the hole is the two holes in this top part are not lined up. I can tell you that the, that the holes in the bottom part, the brown part, are lined up. But that's something you should check too. So what this problem simulates uh, in this assignment is not only your first assembly of some parts, but also when in your project you start putting in parts together from other people. If you made, if you made all the parts, you probably would create them correctly because you're, you're coordinating with yourself. If you're putting somebody else's parts in an assembly, you don't know if they lined up the holes correctly or had them the right size. So you just have to try them and if it doesn't work, you have to fix it. So this is um, this assembly is also simulating you putting together parts that other people have created and fixing them if they need to. So what I, I did actually is I created these parts completely correct and then I went back in and edited, edited them and created them incorrect. I, I said well what would a freshman person you know a person new to nx how would make that might they create these parts and not maybe do it in the most correct way or in the most economical way and i put some errors into the parts so that you could have fun trying to fix it so let's try the motion on the part so let's go to move component we're going to Again, click now. The, the motion should be dynamic by default. You click on the part you want to move, and then you click on the specify orientation. Now, by default, the first time you do this, your what they call the handle or this coordinate system may be anywhere on the drawing. And motion always wants to be in relation to this coordinate system. So what you want to do is always make sure this coordinate system is where your motion is. So we want to have this coordinate system at the end of this pin or in the center of that hole. Otherwise, even though you can get the rotation, the motion to do it with your mouse, if the coordinate system isn't in the right location, it almost will feel like with your mouse that you're trying to push this thing around with a long stick. It's really awkward moving. So this is how you get the coordinate system where you want it. You click on move handles only in the dialog box. Make sure that your arc center snap is on. And then you should be able to click and drag the orange ball. And it should snap to the center of the hole or the end of the shaft. And then turn your handles off. This will make your motion a lot smoother. By default, your collision detection will be none. You find collision detection by opening up settings, going to collision detection, and changing it from none to highlighted. If you have none when you rotate this, even if parts overlap one another, collision happens when two parts overlap one another, one inside the other. Not if two surfaces are touching, two faces are on the same plane, but they have to actually overlap for a collision. 
So if I go to and make this highlight collisions, then when I rotate it, notice they all turned red. Well, that's a big mistake, big problem. That means that at all times, every part is in collision with an, at least one other part. So how do we fix it? We go to each part, we, uh, we check the part with the dimensions. Now you should do this on your own, see if you can do it. And then if you can't, you know, stop the video here, try and do this yourself. And then if you have a hard time, see the solution, I'm going to do the solution for you. Okay, to go to the bottom part. Interesting thing about NX, it allows you to, uh, two ways to edit a part. You can either go to file open and open the part uh, inner hinge there you're in the inner hinge you can go to part navigator you can see how it's all been created here you go to the probably the first sketch double click on it and if you look at the bottom here where it says sketch is partially defined all sketches are supposed to be fully defined so there's your clue that whoever made this part didn't do it correctly because the sketch should be fully fully defined look at your dimension uh, printout which is this thing here and you will notice on this part that it should be 60 millimeters wide on the outside 50 millimeters wide on the inside it's 60 on the outside there is no 50 on the inside these walls are too thick so we're going to go from this wall to that wall we're going to put, notice it says 47.5, it should be 50, so it should be wider on the inside. When I hit enter, you see the walls thin up a little bit, a little bit thinner. Click out here, it says now sketch is fully defined. That fixes this part, at least that sketch of this part. The other thing wrong with this part is I believe the length was wrong. So if you go to sketch... The length here is supposed to be 105. This does not affect how the hinge will work, but it does look a little bit wrong. So enter. And there's one more. It's still not fully defined. You have to add something else. The height of the circle, the hole, is okay. Um, I think I'll just put in like a dimension in there. Okay. Uh, and I'll just enter that dimension so it's so it should turn the right color blue or gray or something here we go hidden message yeah there's a there is a hidden message that's the Easter egg it's inside the wall okay it should say fully defined yes it does we finish it that part is now by the way date. If you edit a part, you may find that some of it, that if you go into the part navigator, uh, that once you edit a part, it won't recreate the model, some of the features. Uh, it doesn't automatically update the features. In fact, it it uh, it doesn't create them, so they are, they'll actually be missing. If something like that happens, look at the part navigator, and you'll see grayed out. Um, the commands here if that happens the way to fix that to bring those back is to either well the tedious way is to right click on each one and say uh, make this feature in other words recreate this feature the other way is to right click on the current feature uh, tab here or the the column open that column up so you can see it right click on it and there'll be a line that says make current feature I think that's what it says something like make current feature um, and when you click on that, all of the features will be recreated. Something new that uh, this version of NX uh, made you do. I'm not sure why. And the last thing you'll have to do for this part, you notice the back end is being clipped off. That's because you have to figure out how this part was created. Two ways. This sketch was created by extruding it into the board and it was made into a solid. And then the front sketch, this one here, was intersected with the other sketch. 
and that's what created the overall part. So if I go to edit that, I would extend this thing a little bit farther. It wasn't extended long enough in the intersection, so it clipped off the back part. So I just stretch that a little farther, say OK, and now it should be rounded here and not clipped off. OK, so that's done and I finish it. Let's go back to the assembly. You should see that it's, that it's fixed. So that's the first way to edit a part, of course, is just to open the part and edit it. You can also edit the part inside the assembly. So if I notice right now, I am in the assembly. The assembly has no model in it. These, mo these models are referenced in. They're not copied into this part file. They're referenced in. So someone could actually have the part open somewhere else on another computer and be editing it while I'm putting the parts together still. Uh, so if you look at the uh, uh, part navigator, you see there's nothing in here on the left-hand side in the history. There's no, there's no, no features in here. If I double-click on the part, though, all of a sudden, I am in the outer hinge. Notice that the little box here is yellow, it's solid, whereas the pin hinge and the inner hinge box is is a wireframe, just like it's a ghost, just like we have in the assembly here looking. So we are actually editing that part right now. We are in that model file. And if you go to the model, the part assembly, you'll see indeed now that features do, do show up. So we can edit inside the assembly. Sometimes if you have a lot of parts, it, it's kind of hard to see in the assembly when you're editing. You go to a sketch like this, double click on it, you still got the ghost of all the images in the background. What you can do is go to the uh, assembly navigator and if you click on the check marks here, you can actually suppress the other parts. So it makes it a little easier to see. Let's fix this thing now. Let's see what's missing on this. The overall size is supposed to be, if I look it up, uh, 48 wide and 38 wide on the inside. So do we have that? We have 38 wide on the inside. We have 48 on the outside. So that looks okay. Yours might vary a little bit. Uh, I think that's right. Okay, you might notice that it's too fat, too wide here. We have to make sure every feature is sized and located. So. This feature, though, if we double-click on it, oh, we are in the uh, extrusion mode here. This should be 45 wide, not 55. Did you notice when you're looking at that, at the right side view of this part, that it's much taller than it is wide? Same proportions, height to width. Now the proportions are correct. Okay, what about the hole? Now, these two holes, you see the blue line there? That means these two holes were created with two separate sketches. Why would you do that? Probably not a good idea. The best way is to make one hole, one sketch, and cut it through, you know, extrude it and subtract it through both sides. But some people aren't always the most efficient. This one, if you double click on that hole, oh, and when this comes up, and it says this sketch was created using an older version of Sketcher. Yes, that's true. You should hit renew and, and exit or edit, renew it, because you want to update this to the, this version of NX. So you notice this hole is only located, it's only sized, it's not located. I can actually click and drag it around. Okay, so we're just going to. Uh, we're not going to do anything with that hole because we're going to actually delete it. Right click and hit delete. Say OK. And the other hole we're going to fix. So double click on that. Renew and edit. Now the only thing wrong with the location of this hole is the 22.5 is the right horizontal location. But the vertical should be 35 millimeters. OK, 35 millimeters. And the size, notice there's no size on it. So one hole was was sized but not located. This one was located but not sized correctly. So let's click on that arc. 
and notice what it says for the number here approximately 10 millimeters the shaft is 10 millimeters the hole has to be 10 millimeters or larger and if we double click on that we see it's actually where's it at double click 9.99 so this would give us a collision the shaft would be bigger than the hole we're going to make that 10 notice the approximate is gone now what I did on this actually is on this number is I I, I deleted the significant digits on the end so that you wouldn't notice that okay so that's sized and located correctly we're going to finish it Oh, there's something you should know. When you edit these parts in this new version of NX, this version is the version after version 12. Uh, it's called a series and a build number. They didn't want to call it NX13. I call it NX13. Uh, so when, it, when this new version of NX, when you edit the sketch, a lot of times the model doesn't get completed. It doesn't complete see this extrude is shaded out it's not creating that subtraction of that hole to fix this you can either right click on this item here and say oh where's it go make current feature or remake current feature but if you have a lot of them to remake the easiest way is to go up to here this is important where it says current feature right click on that and say make last feature current and it will create all of them all of them okay and it, and it should reappear so now that we have that we can right click on this hole and say edit parameter and this is where we extruded that hole through that wall whoever created it did we're going to grab that arrow and pull it all the way through the other wall and say okay that part should be finished so to get out of the uh, the editing of the model we go back up to assembly navigator click on that double click on the assembly name and don't forget to unsuppress those two parts so you can see them okay the pin is the last thing so let's double click on the pin go to the part navigator of the pin double click on now how did the was the pin created how was it given length it was not created by drawing a circle sketching a circle and extruding the pin it was actually created with a sketch and a revolve command so this is what was sketched let me go back here and turn off let me turn off those other parts so you can see it sketch now you can see it okay so the size the length of this overall thing should be pen this pen should be 70 and we not are not given a radius notice it still says partially undefined so from here oh, I don't think I grabbed that from here to here should be five five point zero zero five enter that should be fully defined then if I click on the on the display window here this should pop up sketch is fully defined good finish it go back to assembly navigator turn back those those parts back on there we go double click on assembly navigator uh, right click orient view isometric now we will go to move component click on the part we want to move click on specified orientation there's the coordinate we move the hole so this has been moved so let's click on move handles only click and drag that to the center there click move handles only off and now we should go rotate it and it only collides when I go too far okay 
Now, NX is not an animation program. It does do simple animations. There is a utility that does a, that creates a movie. Uh, you can define the motion of a part, and then it'll do, go through that motion, and you can and you can uh, save the movie as it's working. Uh, it would go something. I, I I'm not. Oops. I'm not familiar with the movie utility per se, uh, but I can show you. Come on, get back there. I can show you how to make it move automatically. Uh, take it off dynamic, put it on angle. So you can define the angle you want to rotate it. So, like 360 degrees would be one time around. And then you also have to put in the animation steps by default it says one step one step is would be instantaneous so they should have put default like 100 at least so you can actually have some steps in the process and then you have to give it a vector that it rotates about so we would click on specify vector typically typically pick a, an arc center like that okay now the the vector is to the right so what we have is let me get my hand here in front of the camera it's called the right hand rule so the vector vector is like this it's pointing uh, toward me and the orientation with that so if the if you point your thumb in the direction of the vector your fingers will tell you the rotation direction okay if you want to rotate it the other way you'd make the vector in the other direction so you can make the direction uh, by going reverse direction, or you can, or when you create it, pick any two points that would define a vector. So let's go angle 720. Let's go like 500 steps. Oops. The the more steps, the uh, the smoother the rotation. Don't go crazy on it though. Um, or it will take forever so there's your motion okay what you need to sh show me in class or send me a video uh, that you can rotate this part uh, about a hundred and I don't know what is it 70 degrees without it colliding and then I will give you credit for this part, for this assignment. Okay, there we go. Um, a couple more things is I will show you, um, I guess I could use this time to show you a couple more uh, assembly constraints, at least I can talk about them. This is the concentric assembly constraint it says constrains two circles or elliptical edges edges it's talking about edges not the surfaces constrains two edges so the centers are coincident and the planes of the edges are coplanar that seems like a circle on a circle right that would work but if you do if you try to do this with uh, two holes or a uh, shaft in a hole um, I think it's I, all I know is it, it, it doesn't play well with other constraints very easily and I think it might actually be it, it might bond the uh, the holes together instead of just making them aligned that it won't let them rotate either so don't use that to align pins and holes use the touch align and first center axis uh, we have the fix command the fix command it looks like an electrical grounding symbol it says it fixes an object at its current position, basically glues it in 3D space. Uh, we have parallel. Uh, this will create two planes. It will make them always be parallel with one another, uh, always perpendicular. I haven't used the uh, align lock, but by the name it says it will align two things, but it also locks them and doesn't allow them to rotate. So don't use a shaft in a hole there either, unless you don't want them to rotate. Uh, this one is fit. I haven't used that one. Constrains two objects with equal radius, such as circular elliptical edges or circular or spherical faces. Constrains them. How it constrains them, I'm not sure if that might uh, fit. It fits them. 
Uh, this one is bond. This will glue things together so they won't move once you put them together. Okay, it's strange objects it says together so they move as a rigid body. So if you wear whatever locate, they might not even be touching. They might just be in two locations in in the in the uh, assembly, and you say I want them to be bonded together, whether they're touching or not. Uh, I think it works that way. So they would just be stuck in space together. They'd always move in relation to one another in the same orientation. So this one is center. We tried that. And what's that one? Oh, angle. Specify an angle between two objects. So they'd always move at that, you know, they'd remain with that angle between them. Okay, and that's it for the hinge assembly.